We know on the other, you know, 25 years old, 48 times in 82 national games, this guy has put the ball into the goal. Uh, he got a goal against Poland in a 1-1 draw back on June 25th. So he's certainly no uh, shyness in when it comes to getting the ball done. Six shots, five on target. I still love that they keep the target versus anything. Uh, and five shots in a single game in a win over Belgium. Uh, big opportunity. Going to be playing for Real Madrid in the La Liga season coming up out there in Spain. On the other side of things, of course, we've got a couple of big names. Everybody knows Bernardo Silva, certainly getting the job done, joins the national team in 2015. He's got 12 goals, 92 appearances. He plays for the EPL's Man City. Uh, six goals in 33 matches this past season. Uh, over a uh, 29-year-old, 233 EPL matches, 39 goals. Uh, and of course, Cristiano Ronaldo, old as dirt at 39 years old, still stuck. Looks like a straight champion. Uh, and of course, he's joined the national team all the way back in 2003. Tons of goals, 130 goals and 211 appearances. This one should be a ton of fun to look at. We look at the lines. We take a quick look at an analysis of what we've got out there on DraftKings are the numbers that I'm quoting today. We see Portugal is plus 240. We see France sitting at plus 135. Then as far as the total is concerned, we're sitting again at two and a half. Heavily, heavily juiced to the under at minus 185. Kind of makes you think about this draw. The draw sitting at plus 200. France to advance. Just win the game and move on is minus 145. Let's start with Subhuman on this one here. Sub, why don't you kick us off? Talk to us about Portugal and France. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this is a game that I invested in. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, France, you know, number number two in the world. <laughs> there he is. Number two in the world uh, in FIFA rankings. And, uh, you know, if you watch them in the past, it, it's well-deserved. They've got a lot of talent on this team. Uh, Kylian Mbappe, of course, first among them. But, uh, you know, Dumbelli, uh Cole Mouani, uh, tons of talent all around this squad. But they haven't looked right at all throughout this tournament. Uh, four, four games, they've only scored three goals, or, you know, should say they scored two goals because one of them was an own goal. Defense has looked great. Uh, they've got a solid goalie. And they've only allowed one goal in those four games. So I am looking at that under two at even money. Um, I think this is a low-scoring one. You know, Portugal on the other side, you know, if you go back to uh, October, November, when you're watching them in qualification games and what have you, they looked great against some of this lesser competition, looked like a really formidable squad, but they haven't looked at in this tournament. They're disjointed, out of sorts. I couldn't find my way to that uh, Portugal side at, at plus money. So what I am going to do, in addition to that under two, um, some people are going to hate this, but um, I, th I think there's value here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that old man, Cristiano Ronaldo, the once upon a time goat. He's looked proper garbage, as the French say, throughout this tournament. And uh, I don't think he's going to score a goal. So I'm going to put him in a parlay to not score a goal alongside everybody's favorite. You know, he's got 1.5 billion Instagram followers. Kylian Mbappe to not score a goal. Kylian has looked awful since he broke his nose and he's been wearing that mask and he he's even said it that he doesn't feel like himself and whatnot you put the two of them to not score a goal and then you take the under two and a half and that gets you plus 125 and uh it's the it's the fade the public parlay um everybody's going to be looking at those two at over plus you know better than two to one to score and they're going to say well you never get these numbers on Cristiano Ronaldo. You never get these numbers on Kylian Mbappe. It's over two to one for a reason. These guys have not looked right. It's going to be a low scoring game. They're not going to put one away. The only thing that slightly worries me here is that those are the two number one penalty makers. So if there is a PK, we're going to be in some. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's the one thing that could perhaps ruin this, but uh, yeah, Ronaldo to not score a goal. Cristiano. Oh, no. 
Cristiano Ronaldo to not score a goal. Kylian Mbappe to not score a goal under two and a half at plus money. I'll take the stab there. I like it, Dan. We're looking at these wily vets there, production extraordinaire, and yet they're not going to score goals here in this game. Do you uh, do you agree with our guy sub? And you tell us how do you want to get paid when it comes to this matchup here? What's going on? What's what's Australia say about this matchup here between Portugal and France? Well, you know, like I, I agree with what Sub said. You know, Mbappe and Ronaldo both have not been playing well. Um, it's just really a lackluster tourna- tournament from both teams. Five goals to Portugal, three conceded. Um, and France, you know, that own goal uh, that they, they got against, uh, I think that was uh, Austria, was it, in the first game? Um, 3 1. Uh, one goal conceded. So, it's it's going to be interesting. I, I just think France. I can. I think France can get this done inside the distance. You know, at, in this tournament, the only quality opposition I really see uh, Portugal played against was Turkey, and, and that was like a, a, I don't think three nil was justified. They got that last goal really late um, in that three nil game against Turkey. So. I just think France are going to be too good. I, I reckon they can get it done inside the 90 minutes. So uh, I'm probably going to roll with France money line at plus 140. Um, I think that's my look. They're just going to get it done. I think they're just going to get it done. And, you know, Ronaldo can retire from international football and we can all be done with him, you know. So, um, but yeah, that's my look. France money line. Dan likes France money line. Lou. I know you got a lot to say about this matchup. I'm excited to hear the breakdown. What are we going to do to get paid here? I don't know if I have a lot to say about this matchup, <laughs> actually. Uh, I agree with Dan. I think France just all around is, is the more class team. One thing I'll add, since I had to do a costume change once you brought up Man City, right? <laughs> I, I, represent, I represent the boys here. So somebody who's a Manchester United fan, I feel like this is important. I see Fernando talking about how Ronaldo was scoring, didn't get along with Ten Hag. But, but before that, I mean, this is, to me, one of the crucial things. Bruno Fernandez is a little bit polarizing. When he came to Manchester United, the team immediately got pacier. They got better. He's like the point guard. He's running the team, making good passes. He's their penalty taker because he has that little skip step that, that is pretty good, pretty effective. And then Ronaldo came on. And even before Ronaldo came to United, you saw this in the World Cup. Bruno Fernandez is one of these guys where like he's way better when he's the man in charge. And I feel like he does not play well at Ronaldo at all. On top of, and I've seen it on the club level, and I've seen it on the the international level. On top of this, Ronaldo, if you, I mean, if you watch this last game, Ronaldo, he is, it's it's in his head that he can't score. And he's actively making the team worse. Every he, wants time every he, gets, he wants every free kick. He, he wants every, every single one. He's going to take every free kick from every angle, and he's going to try to put it on net. There's no flow on this team. It's feed Ronaldo and shoot and He's the coach. I don't care what anybody says. Like, yeah, right. he's going to play. Like, he played in the third game. He played against uh, Georgia. He didn't really need to play in that game. He could have been subbed on, but he insists. He needs to, f- to feed his stats. And that's the thing. He's a selfish player. I don't care. I'm just not a big Ronaldo fan. He's actively hurting this team by taking too many shots. So, with France, it's almost the exact opposite where Mbappe is not doing enough. You got Rabio shooting from like 30 feet out. You got Teo Hernandez. Well, he's out. He's out of he's out for this game as well. Yeah, he has a suspension. But you got like yeah. Teo Hernandez is shooting. Marcus Thurman is like just he loves to just hit it 30 feet over the bar. Like you like they're they're guys that are shooting aren't their best weapons. But I still think France, their better coach, the champs, is just I mean, say what you want, but the guy's got a very good track record. They're drilled well defensively, they're better organized. It feels like a one nothing win for France. I don't even think it's going to be – it's probably the worst of the four games in terms of fan enjoyment. But I feel like France just ekes it out. And there's – last thing is there's a revenge factor here from the Euro finals in uh, 2016 where France uh, lost to Portugal in a uh, final – in a horrible game, like a nil-nil game. But – so there's a little bit of a revenge factor here, but I think France, the line looked wide at first, but I think plus 140s, like not a bad price for who I think just position by position, 
doesn't have any weaknesses compared to Portugal. I, I you you just sort of reminded me of something too. Like lineups aren't usually set an hour until before the games, so this is something people need to be vigilant on as well. But Pepe, Pepe's forty-one years old. He has a very short fuse. Also, for him, for a card to be booked is plus two hundred two on my book. So for a little. A little bit of excitement for this game. I think I'm probably going to look at a Pepe, Pepe to be booked. I like that. Just because of it, it's a knockout stage game, he's playing against fast young players who are going to be that little bit quicker than him, and he's going to be using every dirty trick that he has in his book mm-hmm. to get get that advantage. So that that's a that's a little look I just sort of br- browsed over, but um. Play that on your own uh, accord, but I, I love playing these yellow cards in knockout games, specifically for for players like him. He's he's known to go off and just get a stupid yellow. So, um, I just wanted to add that in there before we moved on. Yeah, you know I, I appreciate the everybody first and foremost rocking with us here early in the morning on America's birthday, and you guys are here contributing as well, talking about this footy battles that are going out there in Europe. Why not have the opportunity to make some money? I see Steve Gregory says Spain is vulnerable to balls over the top and pacey wingers. Fernando Mendoza says France goalkeeper three or more saves is minus 115. Might be the play for Fernando. Uh, Camber Ribbons says, thank you guys. I got to touch grass now. Great show. Catch up later. Thank you. Steve Gregory says nobody in Portugal has the balls to do what Ten Hag did. And tell Renato to fuck off. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's hard to let go of the electric fence. And that is exactly where we think Christian Ronaldo is in this case here. Uh, Lou with the costume change. I love it. We look at this game and we talk a little bit about what's going on here. I think you guys nailed it on the head. It's going to be an interesting battle. We look at kind of who's going to advance. Maybe a little coin flippy. Uh, my thoughts, though, as far as this thing's concerned, is I do feel like we see an under. We see a spot where... To me, the team that I'm just not a fan of, and maybe I just can't get past recent recency bias, but Portugal, Georgia. I don't know what the hell happened out there. Portugal throws out the dud. And again, you guys talked about Ronaldo. Maybe he's the coach. Old man time, father time is catching up to this guy. But I got a couple of props that I was looking at as far as this one's concerned here. Uh, two players, one that I kind of like more than the other, but Griezmann, I believe is how you say it. The first goal scorer on DraftKings is plus 700. Over there on the French side of things, plus 320 for an anytime goal scorer. But a little flyer, a little guy that I want to get involved with here on a PSG. Dembale, I believe is the name there, plus 1,000 as the first goal scorer, plus 475 anytime goal scorer. Not a ton of shots from this guy. Not the guy that goes out there and shoots, but he does sit on the field on average for 77 minutes, so he's playing plenty of time. And... He averages around 55 touches on the ball. This is the kind of game where you got to kind of look beyond the initial guys here. And I, I heard Sub talking about kind of fading away on uh, Ronaldo and Killian out there. And someone's going to score. It might as well be these guys with the big price. So interesting battle as we look at this thing. But it sounds like the general consensus is lower scoring. Again, the under two and a half is minus 185. And uh, any last thoughts here, guys? Yeah, make yeah, sure well, Dembele starts. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say the same about Grizz. I, I think Dembele usually gets the start. Sometimes they'll bring on Grizz after half. He's one of their better creators. And, um, you know, he, if it's 0-0, zero, zero, he's kind of one of, one of the, the guys they like to bring on late. Um, I do love Dan's uh, look at that card um, in the last game. I'll definitely be on that. And I love some first goal scores. I think those are uh, some creative looks. But as Lou said, uh, check lineups. If your book's not going to avoid that first goal score, do be sure that they're in um, before you play it. If your book judge grades you as a loss because a guy doesn't play, time to get a new book. 